the current owner does not wish to have his identity revealed, he tells us of the ghostly occurrences and past history of the Roth home, known as the Watsika Wonder Story. In mid-Illinois, the small town of Watsika had a bizarre turn of events. This story takes place between 1846 and 1878. Mary Roth was born in 1846. For many years, she suffered from having fits and seizures and soon began to cut herself, as she thought her bleeding was releasing the evil inside of her. The fascination with blood did not falter. In 1864, she had one of the most bizarre documented fits of possession. She becomes violent in one of these seizures. She runs downstairs, grabs a kitchen knife, and goes outside and begins to slice up her body. And the way it's described in the story is that she uh, bled nearly all of the blood out of her body. Um, it's also said that she took the, the, uh, the family cat, took the head off the cat, and began to the blood out of his neck. So it's violent, right? <laughs> I, just, I don't say violent, just because just it's, it's violent, it's violent. And she then runs back, runs off and runs down by the river, so runs out that way to the river, and several men have to go and get her, and she's... Uh, it was described in the story that even though she had literally no blood in her body, she had an overwhelming strength that it took several men to control her. One year later, she died at an insane asylum in Peoria. In 1877, at the age of 12, Laurency Venom began suffering from similar fits and began channeling the spirit of Mary Roth. She was invited by the Roth family to stay at the house, and upon doing so, she continued to become Mary Roth's personality. She knew intimate details of Mary's life, and now it was our turn to try to channel these spirits that haunted these two young girls. If I don't see a head spin, I'm not going to be happy. There we go. What about you, Joey? Hey, what up, Earl? It's Madeline. <laughs> Um, I hope we catch some cool EVPs like what I saw on the website and we're gonna use the ghost box even if they don't want to. <laughs> exactly. Hopefully we get some good stuff. All right, cool. Joey, anything? No. <laughs> anything? <laughs> Finally, after the three-hour drive to Wetsika, we were all anxious to get inside and get our home base set up. We all listened to the owner's claims and then went and had dinner at a nearby Mexican restaurant. After dinner, we began our investigation by going to Mary Roth's former bedroom. Once we got back, we made sure all of our equipment was ready to go and our DVR system was recording. Then it was time for the lights to go out. Our first stop was the former room of the infamous Mary Roth. During our stay in her bedroom, we captured four clear EVPs, all with the same voice. What do you think these say? Because you're not alive now. You might think you're alive. But you're just a spirit. I think you're alive. Were you 
reset. Can you turn the light off again? That's the second time it's did it when I've asked it to do it. Mm -hmm. Turn the light off again? I guess you haven't passed over yet. After attempting to communicate with Mary Roth, we went downstairs to the basement. In the basement, there are claims that every medium brought to the house can sense angry men down here who antagonize women and children. We tried our best to communicate with these taunting spirits. There's a lot of people who say there's angry men down here. Are you with us? I'm like, I'm sorry. Are you with us? A few minutes after that spirit box response, we captured a Class A EVP. When we were going through evidence, at first we thought it was a spirit box response, but this is what we captured on our cameras. Why are you angry? This is what we captured on our digital recorder. Why are you angry? Was this a trapped woman spirit wanting to be heard? We only received one more EVP from this basement. This time at least. Can you smack one of us? <laughs> we then headed up to the foyer, where many believe to be the room, many seances were held to contact Mary Roth's spirit. That is why we call it the seance room. Before we were even set up, we captured this chilling voice coming through the spirit box. Just a few minutes later, we captured another spirit box response. I invite any spirits to the house to come communicate with us. Continued the spirit box session for another hour, and no more voices came through our system. 
As quickly as it started, it faded away. It was getting late. As the group was resting and packing up to leave, Ralph and myself decided to get one last investigation in the basement. What we captured was incredible. Unfortunately, prior to us getting to the basement, I moved the DVR camera into the kitchen. When we first get to the basement, I'm trying to figure out how to delete things off of the infrared camera, and we captured these two EVPs only a few seconds apart. I'm just trying to figure out how you oh. delete what we just did. I'm going to hold it's not available. I'm going to hold it Were these two spirits trying to communicate? Once I got the camera up and rolling, we only had about 20 minutes left of battery. I felt a very strong surge of energy hit me. We had activity on the K2 meter, and we had one of the most chilling responses out of the ovulus. Can we stay here all night? Hide. Hide. this basement room used for? Loving. Oh my gosh. Loving. Overall, we felt hardly any presence while investigating the rock home. It was not until we went through our evidence and captured so many unexplainable voices that our belief in the paranormal claims to this home were solidified. We would recommend anyone seeking answers to the afterlife listen to what the spirits have to say. <laughs>